live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Welcome back everyone, We're live here in Las Vegas for Dell EMC World 2017. This is theCUBE coverage, Silicon Angle Media, I'm John Furrier, my co-host Keith Townsend, our next guest is Bask Iyer, who's the CIO for Dell EMC. CUBE alumni, welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Thank you. So we were just talking about NASA, tennis, before we came on. Um, you know, the digital world is a complete convergence with the analog world, so people's interests, how they work, are really key, and one of the things I would like to get your perspective on um, this morning is, a lot of the announcements we heard from Pat Gelsinger, yeah. specifically, was about you know, workspaces, but endpoints. Yeah. And that really speaks to how people want to work. The bottom line is, is that, I got a phone, my phone, now it's a work phone. Those days are over, long and gone. But now, what are the challenges for, for digital? As, as, as the workplace becomes digitized, you got to make it run on time, keep the lights on, but also put in an environment that has empowerment, has all the right software, and meet the expectations of the now enterprise consumer. Yeah. What are the yeah. challenges now? Yeah, I think, first of all, IT industry has been changing in our generation, more or less, right? It's a, it's a young industry. Uh, when I started, running trains on time was important, and it's still important. So you can't say I don't want to run train, trains on time, but that's just the basic stuff right now. So a lot of people are worried about getting Uberized, uh, you know, what happens to my business and so on. On the end point, the issue is people want to talk to things now. So we, I thought mobile, last time when you spoke, we talked about mobile, 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 and, and mobile is still not really there much in the enterprise. People still rely, you know, a lot of things are not available on your mobile other than email and calendar. But home, you know, I'm talking to things, you know, and I, we, we didn't think we would do that, but next year, a couple of years, you're going to be talking to your refrigerator. You're going to look crazy talking <laughs> to it, but you are going to be talking to your refrigerator, your Alexa, your TV, and so on, right? So uh, uh, I think it's a unique combination where enterprises have to be consumer-like. People come and expect to do that. You know, pretty much like, you know, I'm sure your son, I do it sometimes, I go to screens and touch it, yeah. expecting <laughs> it to be a touch yeah. screen. <laughs> so you and I are going to come and talk to things at work and expect yeah. it to talk back. My Mac doesn't touch, but Dell's <laughs> do. Yeah. So I got to ask you, so now that you expanded your role for all of Dell as yeah. a CIO, it's a cultural yeah. integration between two different companies. Sure. And now, you know, you had VMware in the mix, you got EMC, you got Dell, now Dell Technologies. Um, <laughs> What's it been like? I mean, like, has it been um, a firestorm? Has it been smooth? Share some insight into the, the, the CIO's role because not only you got to bring people together through yeah. software, but systems, you got to operationalize multiple companies and cultures. Yeah, I think um, you have to pick a few North Stars, right? So what happens is we kind of accentuate our differences. That's human nature then talking about commonalities. And I work for J&J, GlaxoSmithKline, Honeywell, Juniper, VMware. So to me, this looks like, well, same code of conduct, we want to go do good things, we want to make money, but we want to do the right thing by customers. But people tend to kind of exaggerate the differences in the companies a lot, right? So some North Stars help. The first thing is, we're not going to put the customer you know, in this confusion. So in, uh, in the whole thing and integration, one of our North Stars is, uh, you know, whatever happens, the customer is going to get its way. He or she is going to order what they want from Dell Technologies and get it they will not see the confusion. So having a few things like that, and then surprisingly the code for VMware, Dell, and EMC is very similar. I mean, we're not going to steal, we're not going to do the right thing for the people, we're not going to discriminate, we're not going to, you know, epic values, doing the right thing for our societies and so on. It's kind of common across. So I think we are gravitating towards the common, but there, you know, inside the sausage making, there are always people who say, I work for this company, and my company was better. It's just natural, it's going to take us some time for that to settle down. But externally, we want to make sure none of you feel like you're working for you know, several companies. That's so the, the customer goal. experience, knock that down yeah, first. absolutely. Employees wait in line, get used to your current email systems, no major radical changes. No, no, I, I, that's right, first focus is you, know, you want to order anything from Dell Technologies, you can get it. You want to work directly with VMware, you can. If you want to choose to work with one uh, account person, you can. Uh, billing and everything we take care of. Internal employee experience, we are working, we are shipping, we are building, we are emailing, we are processing and so on. There will be a little less, little more frustration as we bring collaboration and technologies together and so on. But the key is non-disruptive operations. It's very non-disruptive. We're not stopping production, we're not stopping that okay. and so Go on, ahead. right, yeah. So, 
in that vein, yeah. last year we had you on for uh, VMworld, yeah. and you predicted, and I, I want to say you predicted the <laughs> oncoming of VMware on, AW, on AWS. Yeah, we yeah. asked you the question, what tools did your internal developers use? Yeah. As you're making this transition to the, a much larger organization, Dell is known as a branded shop, so yeah. you know, I'm not going to show up in Dell with my MacBook yeah. necessarily. Yeah. But let's talk about the difference in tools and from a VMware culture to a Dell culture and how you're enabling that new workforce, the combined workforce, to basically get the job done. What are, what's been some of the challenges and some of the victories? So I think VMware you know, maintains a fierce ecosystem, right? So you want to make sure VMware software runs on every hardware possible, every database possible, every storage possible. And that's how, that's why me as a customer bought VMware. And it continues to have that independence. But some customers wanted to be put together, like, you know, I'm an audiophile and I want to assemble my own stereo system. I want to buy the right amp and I want to buy the right speakers and so on. It takes me like years to put that <laughs> system together and I listen to one song in a year that is beautiful. My wife goes and buys an integrated system. A lot of customers want that integrated system and they say don't explain how it works, put it all together. Then Dell Technologies makes a lot of sense for them. But VMware is going to say, you know, we'll run on anything that you want. So there are customers who say, I prefer this and prefer that. So it's been natural. Uh, but we find more and more customers want to get a cloud in a box. Right, don't explain that. I don't have time to put it together. So I think it, it's making that transition. From a mobile technology, yes, we, VMware will support Apple, will support Android, will support Dell, will support everything else. That is the power of that. And the Dell ecosystem allows you to do that, right? Well, so, but we did that though. Remember with EMC, we were we were selling, you know, we were enabling other storage devices to work on VMware. So, yeah, yeah that's the way it works. So Pat Gelsinger talked about the VDI thing yeah. on stage, and I kind of had a flashback. Oh, it's finally crossed the finish line. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so I mean, it's been the promise for I mean, yeah. almost a decade. Yeah. But it's been a changing market, so you know, it's not really a negative on anything yeah. other than the fact that people do want to have an end-to-end -end full environment yeah. and have that. What does that mean, that VDI announcement? Because it has a little VX rail in which has been tooled up, and it's looking like it's doing very well. Are you guys VDI'd up within Dell? What's that announcement truly mean to customers? So, there is a place for it. I mean, if you blame, the reason VDI hasn't taken off as much as you wanted is, you can blame it on Dell. Our PCs are getting so much more better and better and better. People want that, right? So, so VDI has always been racing with the laptops to deliver what you want. But you can't force it. So here's the use case for VDI. If you have a school environment, you have a training environment, you have labs, high security environment, if you have contractors working over your network and want to work on joint development, VDI is perfect, we use it all the time. Banks who have branches and they don't have IT people in that branch to go fix it, VDI is perfect, libraries is perfect. Now it's even easier and it looks and feels. Now, you know, we also have some products that you can use uh, Macintosh to run Windows if you want. Those things are perfect, right? So, I think, but there's a, you, if you try to mandate it as a CIO, if I try to mandate it, if I say you must use that PC or you must use the notebook, you would deliberately use something else. I've learned that lesson. <laughs> that I have to enable you on every device possible. Any device, every device possible. And you know, we have to win the hardware based on competition, making the right devices. Yeah, and software's right. going to be the key there. So I got to ask yeah. you on the digital transformation sure. question, as you guys are transforming as a company, obviously the, uh, the combination certainly has got its own CIO challenges. Uh, but one of the messages on stage yesterday and today is, we want to make it operationally efficient for yeah. Uh, IT. Yeah. And I won't say reduce the number of jobs, but in, you know, the side effect of automation is to shift resources. Sure. So the question to you is, in your digital transformation, where are the areas that you're automating and creating simplicity, and where is the, that talent, creative and also operational talent, being deployed into? Yeah, I think uh, data centers, clearly. I mean, the, 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 my definition of a cloud, a non-technical definition of a cloud is, if you have too many people running a data center, you don't have a cloud, right? If you have very few people running your data center, then you have a cloud, more or less. So automation data Just from an operational standpoint. Yes, from an operation standpoint. I mean, that's how you get the cost down, is you know, you, you totally automate it. So there clearly automation is working. Now, those folks could be used, in, in, in my own case, those folks can become spokesp spokespeople for, for my company, right? They all come and talk about how to automate it, so they become pretty useful. A lot of work on development, so I can actually add value for development. And then security. Security is an area that investment is going on pretty high. A lot of the infrastructure. And there's not enough talent there either, so you need to deploy talent. some people on the security front. Yeah, and the infrastructure guys know security very well because they've been fighting that battle, so you can retrain and redeploy them. 
So I think I think that that the value is there, but you know I think you should hire what I call very smart and lazy people, <laughs> people who say I don't want to do the same job again tomorrow. I want to automate it. And in in our experience, the best people do get better opportunities. Why would you want to do mundane things, you know, over and over and over again? Yeah, I mean that's that's the, that is a Facebook meme I saw. Hey, yeah. well, highest IQ people are the ones that are the laziest because it points <laughs> that they're smart. Yeah, and maybe they, maybe yeah, I'm very yeah. high IQ. I mean, that's, you have to tell my wife. They that. say if you glass, have a glass of wine a day, you must have a high IQ as well. So that's why I drink a lot of wine. No, and uh, good point. Now back to the data center because this is another point that's come up, not just here, industry wide. Yeah. Modernization, it's the modern era where they're calling it. We're calling it on the cube. You know, playing IT in the modern era requires different tactics. Sure. What is your definition of modernization of the infrastructure? What does that actually mean, and how does that uh, become a reality for customers? Yeah, I think the first thing is uh, the things like deployment, backups, recovery, disaster recovery, and so on, highly scripted and automated. That's one example of a modern. You also have, I mean, products like All Flash and so on in data centers, which is which is pretty cool because it, the recovery time to go and get a data is, is much faster. But the main, I will start with automation. If I go to a data center, we've talked about lights out data centers. We haven't delivered on lights out data centers a lot. There's still a lot of people. What does that mean up. by that? Lights, lights out means there's no humans, yeah. mm. right? So you can pretty much shut the lights off. And yep. what we did was took the humans out of the data center, but put them somewhere else. They're still working on them, right? So I think I think not having too many people. So if the company grows, you know, from uh, six billion to eight billion or ten billion, you don't want to add infrastructure folks to them. You just you should just scale with it. So I think. That is still the number one uh, uh, clue thing to do. The other thing is we're sometimes stuck with legacy systems and we try to sweat the assets for the longest times. You know, my experience, the technology changes so fast. So you can't take an artificial financial numbers and say five years, six years. Some, you have to look at it and say, if I just throw this off and update it to the latest one, how much money and time would I save? Typical CIOs don't do that. I mean, I, I'm one of the guys who said, let me sweat the asset for 100 years if I can. <laughs> but the tech changes so fast so that it doesn't make sense. So, talking about changing tech yeah. fast, yeah. you've always had the power of EMC behind you guys yeah. for the past few years. You're a, but primarily you, you've come from a software CIO background. Yeah, yeah. What has been some of the surprising differentiators if, as Dell has backed you guys up internally? What have been the things that you're like, you know what, maybe infrastructure, physical infrastructure does matter. Yeah. Where's the key differentiators? I think the first is from a business standpoint, it's a lot of work to be a hardware company. You know, in the software you develop something, there, now you need a supply chain, you need to be global. It feels more like a real company. There's real <laughs> products you're making, factories, you know, and global supply chain and so on, it's complicated to do that part. I mean, from an, from an IT standpoint, so we had set up this, you know, I think we talked about the private cloud in VMware, I was very proud of it, it was one of the best private cloud. All the hands-on labs that are run are run on a private cloud. So it feels like a public cloud to most of our customers, but it's really running in our data centers. Well, the Dell and EMC are in different stages on private cloud transformation. Great opportunity for us to say, here's the world's best and biggest private cloud. And no. by the way, Wikibon just put out research yeah. yesterday, I tweeted a piece of it, yeah. that the true private cloud market's going to be about 260 billion. Yeah. So it's not like it's uh, experimental in any capacity. And no, I think hands, I'm sorry, sorry, I think hands-on lab is a great example, yeah, a great use case. Yeah. I think we see it here at the show all yeah. the time, but can you talk a little bit about how massive hands-on cloud is and some of the technology so you guys leverage? So the same that? cloud that runs my SAP, my engineering applications and everything else, runs the hands-on lab. The beauty of hands-on lab is I don't know what they're doing to my cloud. You know, typically in a CIO, you come and ask me and say, hey, I'm going to increase capacity, and are you ready, do you have people? I didn't even know they were putting this up. Right, they just put it up, and when they put it up, they have customers coming and banging on keyboards, creating virtual machines and so on. My system has to be elastic to scale it up, right? So private cloud, you can do all of that, and you can do it at scale. If you, I still believe, you know, if you run a good private cloud, it's going to be a lot more cost competitive. Than a, than a public cloud, if you run it the right way, because it's automation that you do it. But with the Amazon and other kind of links that we're building, you don't have to make the decision. You can say these things have to be in a private cloud and these things have to be in a public cloud. I, I always kind of you know, twitch when people say everything should go here and everything should go there. It doesn't, if you and I are a startup, we have no money, of course we put it in a public cloud. Yeah. But if you have a little bit of a scale, 
you know, yeah. you should look at both. Right? Hybrid cloud, now, we talked about it on our intro package yeah. today. We think multi-cloud is a little bit way out, but yeah. hybrid cloud is a gateway to the multi-cloud. Sure. Um, my, my final question for you is really more of a strategic one that ties into the theme of the show yeah. and a practical, you know, day-to-day -day, um, uh, operational issue that sure. you face. Yeah. Uh, and that's IoT. Obviously, yeah. Dell is manufacturing, they have suppliers, uh, supply chain is huge, and you know, besides blockchain being potentially a great solution for a supply chain, IoT instrumentation <laughs> is important. How are you looking at IoT? Can you share some color into how you're thinking about it as a CIO, yeah. architecturally, and, and how and if anything you have in motion today relates to that theme? Yeah, I think, I think this is a big wave, and I always tell CIOs, we always seem to, a lot of us seem to miss the waves, right? We, we kind of miss the mobile wave, and then we are trying to catch up with it. We miss the bring your own device wave, and then we try to catch up with it. Uh, because we are, some of us are conservative in nature. This wave is coming. I'm telling them this is coming <laughs> like a ton of bricks. Don't be you know, passive about it. What's going to happen is all your facilities guys are installing IoT devices. They don't call it IoT, unfortunately. They call it building automation systems. It's all sensors. There are coffee machines that are going to tell you that the beans are going down and so on. It's probably already happening. Every factory's got these things that are hooked up. So this wave is coming. They're IP connected? They are, they're all IP connected now. Yes. Because they want to offer a service now. That if you're a coffee vendor, you want to say, how about I fill the beans for you? And I know when it's done. You know the printers did that with toners, so why not I offer it as a service? So it's coming, and it's all there. The thing for IT is better get on top of the architecture and security, right? I mean, because these devices are all communicating, communicating back and forth. You get a lot more attack vectors. So how do you protect them is number one. Better think about it right now. If you come later, it's going to come across like you're stopping progress. So it's better to be cool right now and say, let me help you be successful. It's like surfing, you know, you got to get in shape, then you got to jump on the next wave. So catch up. Catch up now, don't wait for the wave to go past you. I think we actually <laughs> used that quote last year too, yeah. Best. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, appreciate Great it. to get the CIO perspective. Thank real you. practitioner who also happens to be you know, transforming in real time at Dell EMC, formerly with VMware. Great stuff. Here in theCUBE, catching the waves here and Las Vegas for Dell Eames World, breaking it down, all the analysis and coverage and commentary and opinion here on theCUBE. Go to youtube.com slash siliconangle. Check out my interview with Michael Dell. Go to wikibon.com for research and of course, siliconangle.com. I'm John Furrier. Stay with us for more day two live coverage after this short break. Oh.